Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Uh, my name's Terry Buss. I'm the Farm Production Advisor with Manitoba Agriculture Food and Rural Initiatives out of Beausager, Manitoba. All right, and we are standing in a winter wheat field. It is early May, and we're talking uh, survivability. So uh, we did discuss today that winter wheat, incredibly resilient, even uh, fields that looked ugly or had almost nothing uh, are still recovering now and, and may, in fact, produce a crop. What are farmers looking for when they head out uh, this time of year? Well, this time of year, what we're, looking f what we're really looking for is roots. Uh, the whole diagnosis of, uh, diagnosis of winter wheat has to be focused on our root systems because that's where we'll see the evidence of, of new growth beginning. Uh, one thing that happens a lot is folks focus on the leaves and it can be deceiving. Green leaves can actually survive through the winter under the snow. They can stay green and they can look green in the spring and they can turn brown. By, and even if you get leaves that are coming up in the spring, by the time those leaves actually show themselves, you probably are already past some of the some of the times that you wanted some of the timings you wanted in terms of deciding about nitrogen applications and stuff like that so there is a tendency to want to kind of look from the window of the pickup truck across the field and decide if the fields green enough that really is something we have to stay away from we have to look at the roots and we're looking for new ro root growth and as as we've seen today that requires taking some water out to the field that requires digging up some plants gently and washing them in order to identify if we see that root growth actually happen and that that often can be a real surprise to folks because it, it the, the top of the plant can look like whatever it looks like but you'll often find evidence of that root growth even when you don't expect it now we also discussed uh, nitrogen management of course and your recommendation certainly is that farmers should be applying their nitrogen quite early in the year this year obviously is a bit strange because we didn't really get a spring until this week um, but that the recommendation really is to get that nitrogen on there so that that plant has access to it relatively early in the season. Yeah, we've, I mean, for us in this part of the country, uh, many of my top growers determine their nitrogen timing by when they can get on the field. That's re it's really a discussion of when the floater can go. It's not a discussion of, well, should I go? It's a discussion of when I can go. Um, they, if they're not digging up plants, they often don't really see any evidence of top growth at all, but it's winter wheat, I've committed to doing this, I'm going to get my nitrogen on, and I'm going to get it on early. If it turns out that that wasn't a good decision because we actually had the crop get killed out then they'll make they have an alternative plan in their hip pocket but our as I say our timing is often determined by whether we can get access to the fields or not um, now we want to get that nitrogen on early because first off we want to hopefully have the weather to get the nitrogen washed down into the root zone but we also want the plant at its five leaf stage to experience that that rich nitrogen environment when it's setting its kernel number it, at, at about five leaves it's determining how how many actual kernels it's going to have and it's doing that by getting input from its roots and its environment if that environment is not optimized it's going to be less ambitious and so that's really important that if that we get that nutrient down there so that the plant can actually experience that uh, we have heard some cases where there are high nitrogen residual levels in the soil already and in that case that supplementary nitrogen may not have as great of an influence on kernel number but generally it's quite important. Um, if we wait until we see rows of green plants from the pickup truck we likely are looking at the five leaf stage at that point. If we put nitrogen on at that point, it's not a waste, but it's certainly not, not going to be nearly as yield promoting because now you're, you're putting the nitrogen on, the leaf timing's already there, you need rain to watch down the nitrogen. You're looking at a week and a half to two weeks before that nitrogen is in the root zone. The plant's already made its kernel number decision. Now, as I say, that nitrogen is still important. You don't want to have a nitrogen deficient field, but it's certainly you're not optimizing your practices at that point. Great, thanks so much. Okay. Mm -hmm.